What's going on, my little Saturday night motherfuckers? Night fever, night fever. Anyway, I'm doing this video because um, so I've been pretty much inside. I've been doing a lot of research and contacting people and Happy New Year's and everything else like that. Um, but <laughs> it's always conversations. Um, a lot of people ask, you know, how do I know? Obviously, this is happening. And I don't really look at the AMC play or the GameStop play. Now look at how markets are shifting. And the digital asset stuff, whatever. That's one thing. But the big banks on the street, they're already shifting to start making their cash in a different type of a market. They've made a killing with all the with all the stimulus money they got from the government to, you know, during the <laughs> that kind of stuff. But now with China melting and a lot of other things happening and trust me, there's a bubble that's out there. There's a couple of bubbles. There's some wild giant bubbles and the real estate market is just one of them. You know, the, the mortgage market, one of them, the rental market, another one, the student loan crisis, another one, the student loans for housing, another one, the American, Auto loan, that's another one. All these things are all fucking happening in this year. So there's already two things that are happening. Okay. One of the things that's happening <clears throat> is that the government is already in the little talks around on getting money ready in order to do bailouts. Okay. That's not a bad thing. I'll talk to you about that in a second. But the other one that's going on is that the big banks are preparing to talk to investors, people that obviously have big positions, and not just people, but obviously entities on the street and start offering new packages. Hey, if you want to save your money, if you want a safe harbor, if you want to make money in these turbulent times, they're already positioning themselves because those fucking vampires, they make money going up and down. So now they're preparing for <clears throat> phase two. China's melting. You know, it's causing global craziness. You know, I was taking a look at around what countries are now, you know, tapping into the bond market in order to get money because they're broke. They're broke going forward. I mean, shit, Greece is one of the companies right uh, countries right now. So we're starting to go back into that world, very 2008-ish. So that type of world and the meme starts, they don't go together. You have to understand that. They just don't. So I'm happy about that. I know this is already going to end up and stuff like that. And I'm ready to, you know, do this and then other plays and stuff. We're going to have a different market going forward. I mean, when times go bad, there are different things to invest in. This ain't happening. Um, you know. I made somebody in my circle <laughs> laugh when I said, where's the devil? <laughs> anyway, more is the other side. The talk about the government doing bailouts right now, it's in talks, but that started also in 2008. Oh, not 2008, but from before 2008. And everybody was holding and holding and they were telling us to go fuck ourselves. And the, we were waiting on our position because we shorted the shit out of bear and a couple of other things. And we just, I'm like, how can this not be? Why are we not getting paid? We weren't getting paid because they were getting into position. They were moving all that toxic shit. Everybody knows that story. But one of the things they were looking at was whether well, the government going to come in and start sprinkling money around the street. And talk is that's probably going to happen. Now, here's the thing on it. That's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. Now you may think, no, that's bullshit. These funds should suffer. They should get punished. Look, here's my take on that. Sometimes you have to keep an eye on what you're doing and not focus on the other things. Um, you know, I got a funny way of explaining this. You know, as far as the savior, you didn't, you, you didn't want, but he's the one that you had got. You know, 
But it's like being in, in very fucked up countries where society collapsed and you're trying to get to some place, the border, the airport, yada, yada. There's a lot of crazy things going on. Probably fucking riots, buildings burning, all kinds of stuff. But that has nothing to do with you. You have one thing where you have to get to or get out of. <clears throat> That's what this is right now. So understand the idea of the government having the rumors of the bailouts. Let me explain to you the reason why. You see the Fed, they're starting the process of they're going to have to tighten. There's no way around it. But I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> me to you. We can't tighten. It's not possible. We're already going to slip into a, a hyperinflation, stagflation, dragflation, whatever you want to call it. You know, chicken prices are already going up. Remember me last summer? Huh? Chicken at $900? Look, it's no joke. We're, we're heading into some wild shit. It's okay. We're going to make money. Relax. But we're going to also have the hyperinflation, all that crazy stuff to have. So the only way the government can, in a sense, keep things going is what this government has been doing for the longest time. They're going to put money out on the street. They're going to try to lower the interest. Because let me tell you something. This is just like, um, you know, the musical chairs. If they stop the music, ain't nobody got a chair to sit on. So they got to continue the endless printing, the endless printing, and the low, easy peasy, you know, credit going out there. Liquidity always has to be going out. You know, you want to call it a fake economy, a managed economy? Hey, after 1971, everything's been fake. So, what does that mean for us? That means for us, this thing has to get taken care of. There'll be money to take care of this. The funds won't be afraid to do what they have to do because if there's big, they're tied to banks. If there's a big enough crisis, they'll be, they'll be the bailouts. Just like 2008 <clears throat> and Q1, that's right. Q, the quantitative easing, Q1, Q2, Q3, Q unlimited, they came out with all fucking kind of names. You know what that meant? If we stop this, the entire economy collapses. Something scary though. The last time Greece was grabbing for money like that was right before 2008. Just want to put that out there. You had doctors going to garbage cans looking for food. It's, I'm just going to put that out there because this is the kind of shit that happens. I mean, people are now different world. But as far as us getting paid, our play, it requires a lot of money to pay, to, you know, the borrow fee, all that stuff, to hold, to this. We're not in that world anymore. We're gonna get addressed, trust me. Um, this is, this is, there's something else about to happen that's major and can make more money to the street, and this is old already. You'll get compensated, but there's something else coming. It's a, a whole different structure that's coming, and a different type of a market. The banks, or the big banks, you know, the city, the Morgan, they're already getting ready to shift their focus. They're like, we can protect you in these, <laughs> these troubled markets. Why do you think all the politicians are buying into the bank stocks? Why do you think they're buying heavy into the financials? They make a killing during this time. <sighs> Don't worry about that. I guess I'll leave you guys tonight with the Benny Ice story. And I'll talk to you as far as um, I'll show you something when we were kids there was a lake on 103rd street in central park now it was a big fucking lake you probably see me there take a look talk to the duck whatever but in order to get out of the park you got to walk around the entire lake the trail and then go up this massive hill but it was freaking freezing winter time it was in the nighttime we were in the park crossing so jj remember mr watermelon man he turns around and he said the lake is frozen we could, we could walk across the lake. Let me tell you something. It was JJ, me, Mikey, and another guy, Ralphie. It was pretty much three Puerto Ricans and one black guy. What do we know about crows hung over a frozen lake? But somehow or another, JJ wanted to be fucking Indiana Jones, and he said, we can do it. And it'll save us that big, crazy walk, and it was snowing, and it was ice. It was fucking horrible. So what did we do? The stupid kids we start crossing over the lake. And we're walking slow, and JJ's out there. Yeah, it's nothing bad. It's fine. We could just do this. And it's fine. So we got to about the center of the lake. And all of a sudden, I heard the wildest sound. <laughs> Even when I hear it now, I, I, I turned it up. A little transmit for that. 
I heard a like a whipping sound. And I was like, what the fuck? Everybody froze. And what it was is the ice was cracking in the middle. So I froze, BD froze, Mikey, forget about it. He struck a pose fast. Ralphie, it was Ralphie's brother, Jerry. That motherfucker started talking to Jesus. Don't worry about them. Fucking JJ, when he heard it, inside of him, the Wakanda him said, you know, me not going to die on frozen lake. <laughs> that motherfucker started running. <laughs> Big fucking mistake. Somewhere around 20 steps away, the biggest ice crack I ever heard in my life. And I never heard any more ice cracks after that. But nonetheless, JJ started floating away. <laughs> started disappearing, heading towards the, the rocks, the waterfall stuff. So we lost JJ. He was gone. We were fucking kids. We were, we were traumatized. Fucking JJ's dead. Fucking BD's like Spider-Man on the ice. Mikey is just, he's, he's like a fucking snowflake. Just doesn't want to move. Jerry and Ralph, we, I don't know what the fuck was happening to them. They were still talking to God. I think they were speaking in Latin, like, Domino's Padre, Domino's Santos. Anyway, so we're there. We're fucking, I'm on the ground. I'm not no fucking hero. I'm on the ground saying, holy shit, if I fall into this dark, frozen water, I'm done. So we're there, and it's snowing, and the sky is red, and it's fucked up. And we're there about to fucking die. JJ's dead. <laughs> JJ's gone. <laughs> and he just got his ass kicked by the Korean a couple of months before in the summer. So all of a sudden, we're there, fucking dying, freezing, waiting for the ice to fucking take us out. And all of a sudden, this, this lady, no, it was the big fat guy that came first. Big fat guy comes. Big fat black guy is like, yo, kids, you motherfuckers okay? And we're like, yo, help us. <laughs> this motherfucker, we don't even know why he was crossing the park. No worry about it. I'll go out there and get you. We were like screaming, no, you fat motherfucker. Don't come on the ice. You dumb motherfucker. We're all going to drown. So no joke. This motherfucker turns around and he thinks he can go out there like a fucking ninja, like a fucking gazelle, you know, and fucking just, I mean, we're kids. We weigh like nothing compared to this motherfucker. This motherfucker looked like he invented yo-yos. He was fucking eating them things since he was a fetus. So anyway, he's coming out there. And after a certain point, we were cheering him on because we thought, fuck, maybe he could, he's an adult. He knows what he's doing. No joke. About halfway to BD, the fucking I just fucking gave in. That motherfucker disappeared. I heard BD fucking scream. Ah! Fucking, you know, we were like, oh, shit. So anyway, he fucking reemerges frozen. He got his fucking giant hoof on top of the ice. Yo, yo, fellas, I think we're going to die out here. And we're like, oh shit, an adult said we're going to die. And first, I'm thinking, no, this motherfucker going to die first. Because he's, he's in the fucking water, like his entire body. He has no upper body strength to pull himself up. He's dead. This motherfucker is dead. So here we are. JJ's fucking dead. He's gone. Jerry and Ralphie, they're talking to the fucking Virgin Mary, E.T., Yoda, Jesus, the guy that Jesus went to high school with. He's talking to everybody. So anyway, BD's fucking... You don't know. This motherfucker's like, he got the fucking ice claws like that. It's fucked up. But anyway, so we're there, and we're all fucked up. We don't know where JJ's at, whatever. We don't know what to do. And then the big fat black guy, he's like, oh, oh, this hurts so much. This motherfucker wasn't encouraging it. He was fucking putting fear in us. And BD's like asking, how, how, how does it hurt? He's like, it's so cold. We were fucking terrified. <laughs> so anyway, the big fat black guy starts moving around. And BD's like, don't fucking move. You don't break the ice, you fat motherfucker. Don't move. It was fucking getting wild like fucking Lord of the Flies out there. All of a sudden, this lady comes. You know one of those ladies that um, they put on like their pink vest and skis and shit like that. And fucking is in the park at night with a fucking dog when it's like a blizzard or whatever. Is everybody okay? You're like, fucking no, go for help. <laughs> Call somebody, you fucking bitch. <laughs> so anyway, what does this fucking bitch try to do? And we warned her not to do it. She takes off her fucking skis and she starts walking towards her. I'll, I'll come over. Come, what are we going to have? Fucking tea? Cookies? Look at the fat dude. Anyway, she only came like really like two or three or four fucking steps and her fucking ski boots. 
them things went down. She was lucky though. She went down on the edge and was able to crawl back. The problem was she was our last line of defense. We thought she was gonna go and actually go to a pay phone because New York City had those like booths with the yellow phone. Help, they're dying back then. What happened? She starts crawling back out. We're like, yeah, you survived. Yeah, you made it. Go call the fire department. All of a sudden, she goes up to the fucking, um, the edge of the fucking lake where the grass and the rocks is at. I'll show you in a couple of days. She's there, and what does she do? She just crawls into a fucking rock. <laughs> fucking shaking. And Beatty's like, get up. Get up or you're going to die. Go find the fire department for us. You fucking made you made the ice more weak because Beatty's having like this whole confrontation with her. Going crazy, and I'm like, oh shit, this chick looks like she's fucking dying. <laughs> she fucking froze like Madonna in the 90s. Anyway, I'm fucking here looking at this fucking thing, and I'm like, no joke. I think straight up, like, this ice is gonna go, and we're fucked. Because this lake feeds into like a little waterfall. That's where we lost JJ. He was just gone. So, anyway, as we're there, and it's fucking snowing, and the fucking ice it was like lying in the refrigerator, no joke. Fucking Jerry and Ralphie, them motherfuckers are gone. I think they're like in their brain, Mom, if I ever see you again, <laughs> do that type of shit. So I'm fucking dead. And like, I, I'm thinking to myself, like, okay, maybe we can crawl this. We can crawl the fuck out. That didn't last. I started crawling a little bit. I heard, I was like, oh, shit, nobody's crawling. <laughs> Puerto Rican circle pose. So all of a sudden, as we're there, and shit is hopeless. What do we see coming down the fucking trail? Not the hero we wanted, <laughs> but it's the hero we got. Fucking Benny <laughs> goes looking for us. And we're screaming, Benny, what the fuck, man? Call the fire department. Don't get on the fucking lake. Call the cops. Call anybody. And Benny's like, don't worry about it. I'll save you motherfuckers. <laughs> we knew Benny was going to die, too, and take us with him. We're like, no, Benny. No, you don't do it. Whatever. So all of a sudden, Benny disappears. Like, what the fuck? Hey, Benny, what the fuck is wrong with you? Come back. <laughs> come back. <laughs> like, hey, come back. So all of a sudden, Benny comes with this big-ass Puerto Rican fucking ladder. It's like a red wooden ladder. Yeah, I showed you that video, like the new ladders they have. Not that. That was a fucking wild one. They had it by the, by the rocks and the cliff. I'll show you guys in a couple of days. So he comes over. He's like, don't worry about it. We're going to fucking do it. I say he got a ladder. We don't know what the fuck he's doing. But he got a ladder. I've never seen this ladder in my life. But they have it there in the winter. So he turns around. He gets, he puts it on the ice. He starts pushing the ladder and crawling, pushing the ladder crawling. So the first person he gets to is me because I, I was the closest one. And he passed the fat dude. The fat dude started reaching to him. He's like, nah, get the fuck out. You're too fat. <laughs> we'll come back for you later, motherfucker. So all of a sudden he comes to me and I get my hand on the ladder. So he can take, basically it spreads out. So I use the ladder to like... <laughs> So I crawl my ass to the side and I'm like, I'm now basically I'm saved. Okay, so I'm good. So my weight is gone. Then we took the ladder and we fucking put it over to Beatty. <laughs> Beatty didn't want to move. Beatty, grab the ladder, motherfucker. No, I'm not doing it. Beatty, we're going to leave you. Okay, I'll do it. Anyway, we fucking pulled that fucking big savage with the ladder, like slowly but surely, and we skated him out. Crazy stuff. Ralphie and Jerry, we could have saved those motherfuckers. That ladder wasn't that fucking long because everybody ran in different directions when they were the ice crack. So I'm safe. BD safe. The next one was Mikey. And the, and the big flat back guy, he's like, why are you motherfucking leaving me? I'm dying. Dude, think warm shit, man. We'll be right back. We got Mikey out because if we didn't bring Mikey home, Frank was going to fucking murder the three of us. So anyway... We got Mikey, we got Beatty, we're bucking back, we're safe, whatever. So now, we got to rescue this big fat black guy. We didn't know how the fuck we were going to do it. What we did, we just slid the fucking ladder. It has a rope at the end, and you could pull on the fucking rope. So we, we dragged his ass through rocks and mud and frozen ice. And then when he, motherfucker, comes to the edge, give me a hand. He's fucking dripping like a swamp monster. Like, they fucking want to touch you, motherfucker. Crawl up. Fucking ladies on the side. So she's still like this. <laughs> I'm fucking skis in there. So anyway, we had Jerry and Ralph, and we're like, yo, yo, Jerry and Ralph, he's like, yeah, we're here, get us. Yo, we can't, the fire department's going to get you. <laughs> we told fucking Mikey to go get the fucking fire department. So anyway, Mikey goes to one of those booths and starts calling, like, everybody's dying. I think, I think the lady's dead, that type of shit. I think he was speaking properly, but anyway, a few minutes later, 
Trust me. NYPD, fire department, everybody came. There was even a helicopter that came. I'll talk to you about what happened to me and Benny and Mike afterwards with Frank. We're all fucked up. So anyway, when the helicopter comes and everything, like, I just felt bad. Where the fuck is you? We gotta find JJ. He's like, where's fucking JJ? So we start fucking running to the other side of the lake. No joke, we just left it. <laughs> we just left that lady fucked up. What we're we gonna do, hug her? Anyway, she's there, we're like, think warm things. <laughs> The, the fat black guy, he was like, oh, <laughs> it hurts so much. Anyway, those two motherfuckers, I don't know, Jesus was going to take them. We couldn't intervene. But we needed to save JJ. So we fucking went to this out with a, with a rock strap, with a fucking waterfall. It's on the little bridge. I'll show you guys later. All of a sudden, we fucking looking around. JJ, JJ. We don't know where the fuck. All of a sudden, we look as JJ was black. He was midnight black. Like, for real. Like, this is the kind of motherfucker where, like, you say the word Wakanda, you think JJ. So anyway, I love that motherfucker. May you rest in peace, and I'll see him soon. All of a sudden, he's under the bridge clinging to rocks with fucking chunks of ice. <laughs> and ice cold water landing. He's like, I can't hold on any longer. Now, for JJ, we reached down and grabbed that motherfucker. He was like a wet cat. We were just bringing him back out. And he was shaking all fucked up. And JJ was an ugly motherfucker with fucked up teeth. We used to call him Yuck. To see him shaking like that, it looked crazy. But when the fire department came and the helicopter, they wrapped up JJ in some aluminum foil. They took him in a fucking ambulance. <laughs> we didn't see JJ for months. <laughs> I'll tell you another story about that one day. All of a sudden, me, Mikey, and Beatty, we were taking another ambulance to the hospital for like exposure, all kinds of stuff. Once we got in the ambulance, we was like, oh shit, our parents are gonna kill us. <laughs> the fucking lady, they wrapped up in aluminum foil and threw in the back of another ambulance. The big fat black guy, I don't even know what happened to that motherfucker. <laughs> he was still trying to talk to us. Fellas, help me up. Go we'll tell him the fireman, yo, that motherfucker's right there. He's dying. Where? Where is he? He's right fucking there. Let me tell you something. If you black, don't try rescue operations at night because motherfuckers will not see you if you fuck up. Love you motherfuckers, but do daytime saving shit. Think like Spider-Man. Anyway, so they take us over to the fucking hospital and they're treating us up and all kinds of our fucking hands are all cold and fucked up and my fucking like ear is blue because I was like that. <laughs> I couldn't hear nobody for like a week. <laughs> so I'm fucking there. We're fucked up. Frank comes up. He's like, what you motherfuckers did? I heard a fucking helicopter landed in fucking Central Park. That, that was you motherfuckers? Like, yeah, that was a fucking helicopter that fucking came. It was fucking crazy. But we explained the whole thing, the ice, whatever. <laughs> we got our ass chewed out that night. Trust me. But the thing about it, the moral of the whole story was that whole rescue operation, Benny was the one that saved all of us with that fucking wild ladder and that rope. So you have to understand, sometimes, I mean, we were expecting like fucking Batman, Superman, the fire department, shit, I would have even taken a fucking transmitter for that looking for dick in the park saving us. Not Benny, because when he got involved, shit was going to go wild. But nonetheless, it was one of those moments where he rose to the occasion and saved everybody. So if this market is going to get fucked up, if it's going to get crazy, and if the banks are shifting in order to start selling like, you know, you know, we can protect you and make money. All that means is that this market is going to make it possible for us to basically kill the devil and all the these and everybody involved. Because when markets shift, there's no money anymore for them to hold. And if bailouts are going to come to take care of them so they don't get vaporized and whatever like that, who gives a fuck? If that's going to help them be confident to pay us out and get out, it's not the rescue plan we wanted, but it's the rescue plan we got. So that's it, motherfuckers. Stay away from ISIS this winter. And never, never take winter advice from a black guy that stole the watermelon when he should have stolen an apple. Love that motherfucker, but who fucking steals a watermelon and runs? <laughs> that can. Love you, motherfuckers. Oh, it hurts so much. We're like, dog, you're gonna die. <laughs> you're gonna die, motherfucker. Fucking got crawled down the lake. And you know what's back in the days when motherfuckers used to wear sneakers loose? They, they took them out. The motherfucker had no sneakers. <laughs> Yeah, one sock and his other fat black foot was out. <laughs> it was just pink. That fucking foot looked like fucking a half a chicken fucking claw. <laughs> it's again.